condemnation on themselves because they profess that they knew God but in action lifestyle they acted and behaved like pagans, heathens, atheists that they didn't actually believe in the presence of God where they were Hearing the word, believing the word, accepting the word brings blessing upon us. The condition of your heart will tell. How much of the word you are learning? How much of the word are sinking in, soaking in, receiving? How much of the word will control your life? How you receive is an indication of how much the word is going to work effectually, effectively in your heart. The God will also guide you and help you. There will be no wandering thoughts. There will be no insensitivity to this word that God himself Send it to us as his children, members of his family. That you not become so familiar with the Bible study that the familiarity then makes you superficial. That you'll take the word and receive the word. Like the worthy of old, like the people of old accepted the word, they rejoiced at hearing the word, they delighted in the word, they allowed the word to search them out, and the word to burn everything like chaff out of their lives. They allowed the world to have the ministry of a hammer breaking hard rocks in pieces. They allowed the world to encourage them, to comfort them, to lead them up, to stir them up, to lead them and turn them in the right direction. They allowed the world to be a light in their pathway. Let's have the same attitude so that the Lord will keep on blessing us in the fellowship around His table as we eat and drink in His presence. So that the thoughts of our hearts the meditation of our hearts, the response to this word, as we learn, be acceptable unto him, and he'll find us faithful, dependable, loyal, obedient, God-pleasing children of God. There's power in the word.
and the word that goes forth from him shall not come back until it accomplishes except it accomplishes that for which the Lord had sent his word. Bring your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole personality to the world. Do not allow any private personal scene that may be on your mind on your heart to disturb you to sway you or to make you go astray from full concentration on the word he teaches us tonight pray that God will so give you such love for the truth that the truth then will take over your life and so work in a supernatural way in your life as the word works in such a spiritual way in the lives of the people that first heard before it came to you. The Lord is willing to bless those who come to Him with a willing heart, with a ready heart, and those who look up to Him as the Almighty God, those who exalt Him as the Most High God, and they have that honor, respect, reverence for him. He looks at the condition of the heart of all the people that approach him, those who come to his presence. And when he sees people that honor him, that exalt him, that adore, that, are, that worship him, that do not have any distraction, any other ambition to lead them this way or that way. He delights and blesses such people. In Jesus' name we pray. I great God in heaven, we thank you because even though you are great, so great and so high, that you would have been unapproachable except for the Lord Jesus Christ who became the mediator between you and us. And because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, forgiving us and cleansing us and blotting out the writing that was against us, because of that we can approach you and come in your presence without any fear and without consciousness of worthlessness. Lord, we pray as we accept also, we'll exalt you and worship you in spirit and in truth in Jesus' name. And as we come to study your word together tonight, we pray that you open the pages of the scriptures to everyone, and this one will benefit, this word will benefit everyone in Jesus' name. Save those who need salvation. Sanctify those who are saved and feel what the Holy Ghost, the people who are saved and sanctified and committed to serving you and evangelizing their community in Jesus' name. 
strengthen your people and make us steady in the things of the Lord in Jesus' name. The respect we ought to have for you, the honor we ought to have for you, the exaltation, the worship, the adoration we ought to give to you. More than we respect and honor people here on earth, help us, Lord, to give to you in Jesus' name. We pray that you help us not to have the spirit of the world, the spirit of disregard and disobedience and disrespect for the Most High God. Help us, Lord, that will not have the mind or the spirit or the attitude of the Antichrist, but have the attitude that will follow you steadily all through our lives with honor, respect, and glory in Jesus' name. Help us, both young and old, both children and youths and children and fathers and mothers to understand that when we come to the presence of the Lord, you want to bless us. And Lord, we pray, we'll put ourselves in that spiritual condition of humility so that your blessings will flow into every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We are sitting down now. We come back to the study of Daniel. And we're looking at Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel chapter 7, already we have seen the vision, the revelation that God gave unto Daniel. But God gave him this revelation, this vision, in the form of symbols, illustrations. You could almost say a parable. And he needed interpretation, he needed understanding for the benefit of those who might not have been here when we studied the first two uh, studies in chapter 7. I'm going to just read to you from verse 4. We're looking at Daniel chapter 7, verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld shall the wings thereof were plugged, and it was lifted up from the earth, and then it says, and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Then it was made to see the kings of the world in their beastly and brute nature, and he saw them like animals, like beasts. And the first one he saw was a lion that actually we have studied already represents the kingdom of the, ba of the Babylonians in verse 5. And behold, another beast is second, like a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three reefs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise and devour much flesh. That's the kingdom that came after the Babylonian Empire, the Middle Persian Empire to destroy, to totally conquer the Babylonian Empire. That's why it says, Arise, now get up and don't be afraid of the Babylonians and kill and devour and destroy much flesh. And then after that, the third one came in verse 6. After this, I beheld, and lo, like a, lo like, like a leopard, lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of me four wings of a fowl. And the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to each. This is telling us that the third kingdom, the Grecian kingdom, arose and took over from the Middle Persian government and had dominion. Now that is going to get out of the way, we're going to have the fourth. In verse 7, after this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth that devoured and break in pieces and stanch the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse different from all the beasts that were before it, and it, and it had ten horns. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Those were the things that Daniel saw. When Daniel saw that, Daniel was a person who had interpreted the dreams for the people. 
and interpreted the visions of other people. In his own case, now he had his own vision, his own revelation. He needed interpretation. He needed understanding. But you understand that when he saw what was the interpretation of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 4 verse 19, the way he felt and the way he thought about it. Then let's go to Daniel chapter 4 and let me just read verse 27. In verse 27, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break up thy sins by righteousness. Daniel was not a person to just hear the word of God and leave it like that. He heard the word of God, and he saw the interpretation of what was coming on the king. In fact, he had a sorrowful heart, a sad heart. And he, he was actually kind of mourning for the king. Look at verse 19. Now then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished. That means astonished and surprised and amazed for one hour. And his thoughts troubled him. When he saw that vision, when he saw the interpretation of what had been given to Nebuchadnezzar, his thoughts troubled him. He knew that this king was going to go through a terrible, terrible problem. And let's look at chapter 8. In chapter 8, he saw another one, another vision, another, uh, another revelation. And then again, he had a good attitude, a good attitude, which is what the Lord is expecting we ought to have. When you hear the word of God, when you see the revelation of the word of God, that you'll think about it, you'll meditate on it, and then you'll be able to take the right attitude. I'm looking at chapter 8 of uh, Daniel, in chapter, sorry, still chapter 7. In chapter 7, let's look at uh, verse 28. It says, either two is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me. He meditated on what he saw. And he said, my thoughts and my cogitations much troubled me. And my countenance changed in me. But I kept the matter in my heart. That's the attitude you ought to have when you hear the word of God. Look at chapter 8 now. In chapter 8, verse, uh, we're reading from verse 26 and verse 27. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true, wherefore shalt thou of the vision, for it shall be for many days. Now comes this attitude, the sorrow. And the oppression that he had in the earth, when he thought about what he saw, when he meditated on what he saw. And that's what the Lord is expecting of me and expecting of me. Not just to come to the Bible study and not just to read all these verses of scripture and string everything together, but to think through and to meditate on what we're hearing so that the thought of that word, the meditation of that word, will then have a great transforming impact in our lives. In chapter 8, verse 27, And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days after what I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Other people did not understand what he had seen, but she understood because he thought about it. He meditated on what he had seen. And the Lord wants you to do the same. It is meditation on the Word of God, the revealed prophetic truth that actually will have a changing effect, a transforming effect, a salutary effect upon the heart of the people. Without meditation, Everything we hear will look like we just gather up knowledge in the mind, in the head. And the knowledge in the head without meditation will not actually bring any fruit in our lives. Look at the importance of meditation on the Word in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate thou shalt meditate as we're looking at the book of the lord at the word of god at the revelation of the vision that has given to us he said it shall not depart from thy mouth it's not just for the monday night or monday evening it's not just for one day in the week he came on says over here thou shalt meditate therein 
day and night, and thou shalt observe to do according to all that is written therein. It says that it's when you meditate on the word and you'll see the commandments in the word, the demand in the word, the challenge in the word, and then you'll be able to do as the Lord Himself has committed into your hand and commanded you. And then it says, It's only then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. We're looking at Psalm 1 verse 2. Psalm 1 verse 2. Let me start from verse 1. Blessed is a man. How do we get blessed? Our attitude to the word of God will show whether we'll be blessed or not. And you know the people of the world, they are not waiting for the blessings of God. They think they are sufficient by themselves. They think they can do everything, possess everything, go all the lanes and climb any mountain and descend any valley and achieve any success without God. That's why God is not in their thoughts. God is not in their mind. That's why they act in the world as if there were no God. But we know, we understand, if we're going to have success, if we're going to have any progress in life, we need God. We need His support. We need His help. We need His hand upon our lives. And without Him, we are nothing. Because of that, that's why He speaks to us. And that's the reason why we meditate on the Word. He says, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor seated in the seat of his comfort, but his delight, his joy, his happiness, his desire, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does see what does he do? Meditate how often? Day and night. Not only Monday night. You know, uh, the reason why some people backslide is because they do not meditate on what they hear day and night. They do not think through on what they hear day and night. They are very, very constant in the Bible study. They hear. They read. They learn. They might even understand what they have read that night, that Monday night. But because of the lack of meditation on the world, there's no change in their lives. There is no conversion, there is no salvation, there is no righteousness, there is no transformation. If we're going to have the benefit of the word and the profit of the word, it is when we hear the word, we analyze it, we apply it to our lives, we believe that word, and then we meditate. When you get back home, you think through, how does this apply to me? What have I learned today? What lesson have I learned today? What change shall come upon my life as a result of what I've learned tonight? It says, His delight shall be in the law of the Lord. It is Law shall he meditate, does he meditate day and night? That's why it says in verse 3, And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth the fruit. His fruit in his season, his leaf shall not, also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall do what? Shall prosper on the basis, on the condition of meditating on the word that we have learned. I'm looking at Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 97. Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Here is the psalmist saying, I really love the word of God, and I meditate on that word of God all the day. Uh, can you see now, some people have been asking and, and, you know, wondering why. How can somebody be coming to the Bible study like this uh, once a week, and, and it's very regular and constant, and yet there is no change in that person's 